Hey, boys and girls. Uh, sorry, it's taking a little bit. Um, I know a couple people have been asking me about some details and uh, a little walk around and stuff like that on uh, my uh, my personal project. So, um, actually started with just the measurement of how big I could fit back here um, and went from there, you know, so I'm going to uh, preface this. Um, I haven't welded since high school. Uh, I'm not a metal worker, so, you know, things uh, things aren't perfect, but they did turn out pretty good. I actually um, um, got, a, got a feel for uh, running my beads, it came back a little bit. Um, the more I worked on them. So, but um, I'm by no means a professional, but I wanted to uh, wanted to build a pit. And now the reason I did is um, I was actually looking for a uh, stick burner and there's a lot of nice pits out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. And, um, but there's a lot of them that uh, cost a lot of money, you know? And there always seemed to be something that I didn't like. Um, great height. You know the clearance between the grates you know it's like I, go to, I do a lot of ribeye roasts and uh, you know a lot of a lot of things like that and I couldn't even put you know ribeye roast in with keeping the second shelves in so if I'm doing a ribeye roast I lose all that real estate on the second shelves you know it's like I get it you know cost wise they want to say hey we have you know 3,000 square inches of cooking space but if I have to take the racks out to do a ribeye roast you know that three thousand of square square inches of cooking space doesn't do shit for me. You know, so um, so that was one thing that was a peeve of mine. Um, you know, minimally design. You know, I mean, there's you know there's that, but that's you know that's just personal opinion. Um, there's just just some things, you know. And as I was looking and I was like finding things like oh you know this this is exactly what fits my needs. I'm looking and you know we're talking six grand and up. So I started calling around and doing some pricing, found a metal shop, and um, I realized I'm going to try it because I can do it a lot cheaper, and then that way I can do whatever I want, you know? And down the road, I don't have to worry about warranty. If I want to, you know, if I have to fix something, no problem. Um, if I want to change something, if I want to add something, if, you know, stuff like that, I have that freedom to do so. So, um, just gotta say, if you're if you're on the fence about it, if you're thinking there's too much to it, there's a ton of information out there. There's a ton of groups out there that can provide information. If you get stuck in anything, questions, um, Google is your best friend, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, YouTube videos, you know, there's a few times I came across a few things. I'm like, I'm not sure how I can pull that off. So I would just, you know, try to search. And, you know, somebody out there has tried something at least close to what you want to do and um, it happened so um, uh, just real quick it took about uh, about three weeks a little short of and uh, or a little heavier and that's about it so um, let me show you let me give you a walk around show you what I did um, why I did it um, I tried to base a lot on science and how things work and I just kind of went from there um, so, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. So, um, here it is. This is uh, what I like to call the trend killer, so. All right, so we have our chamber, which I did, uh, that is 60 by 24 by 24 deep. Um, now I wanted to do, the depth was important to me um, because I could only get so much width, but with the depth, I can actually turn things. If I wanted to do a brisket, I can actually put my briskets in front to back. I can put ribs front to back, which gives me a lot more real estate than it would have coming forward. You know what I mean? So that was one thing I wanted, I wanted to stick with on the depth. <clears throat> I wanted it to be mobile. Um, a little more on that later. I did, these are um, lawn tractor tires. Um, the thing is, is Yep, it, it rolls. Um, the frame I built um, is all 3 16 uh, two by three square tubing. Um, but as the build progressed, um, she started breaking the um, real heavy mark. So uh, 
uh, pushing it around is not easy. But it's here. This is where she's staying. <coughs> if I ever have to pull it, um, comps, things like that, that's what my lawn tractor's for. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a um, um, a well-built um, pit with some nice thermal mass um, than compromise that just because, you know, I have to wheel it around or whatever. So um, the stacks are five and a half by five and a half. Um, they are uh, three sixteenths as well. The um, uh, chamber itself is all six gauge. Um, now I was going to, I originally was gonna do a fully insulated chamber, but I did have uh, a couple things come up. Um, for one, the sheer weight of the unit, um, if I were to do it, um, the cost of the ceramic um, insulation, um, I was trying to stay on a budget. So I, um, um, I did some research and the steel place I had had an abundance of six gauge. Um, and the thermal mass between the quarter inch plates and the six gauge plates, which I believe, don't quote me, is like three and three sixty fourth, something like that. I don't know. Um, but um, it was minimal. Um, it definitely did not weigh the cost of um, uh, the addition to the quarter inch plate, not to mention working with the quarter inch plate, which I found out later because the firebox is um, it's a lot harder. So. I mean, I literally went to Harbor Freight. I bought um, a welder, a chop saw, and a grinder. And that's the tools I used to build this thing. So everything was done out of plate, um, uh, plates and tubing. Um, I didn't do flat stock or anything like that because the, they charge you more. So I just, I cut everything myself. But, um, so here, let me, uh, let me bring up here uh, the, Handles I picked up at this cool place, this website I found called um, uh, Wholesale Parts Barbecue or Wholesale Part Wholesale Barbecue Parts .com. Um, Had to do a little approval process, you know, there's uh, things like that, but you get wholesale prices, um, and they actually have some really nice stuff. Um, so, like my t uh, these are the uh, Tell True gauges. I got those from there um, with the nipples. And the um, uh, the clamps, which actually have a lock, the cinch clamps, um, just just things like that. So, um, all my handles on my grates here. Let me crack this open for you. Um, all these handles right here, also, uh, I think they're like two bucks a piece. You know, yeah, I could have taken bar and. You know, I could have taken some steel rod, I could have warmed it up, I could have bent it. It's like, but for $2, you know, I can't even buy the steel for that. So, um, so I tried to be smart on that kind of stuff. Um, the doors are actually quarter inch uh, because I wasn't, there was no insulation. Um, I did frame everything out um, in 3 sixteenths, uh, one by. Um, uh, 3 sixteenths, uh, 3 quarter inch, uh, I built all the grates from. Um, my inlets now, um, my stacks are five and a half inches by five and a half. Like I said, they're 36 inches tall. Um, there's a, there's a cool website, um, called Feldman's, I believe it's a, uh, pit calculator. So you can kind of, it kind of, um, gives you a nice, um, nice place to work from when it comes from, uh, how big your chamber is, how, what size your firebox should be, um, how tall and big your stack should be, things like that. Now, I went overkill on the stacks because I figured better safe than sorry. So I did do the dual. I know I had a lot of people ask me why I did them so low, but actually um, upon all the research I've done, um, even the big boys, Aaron Franklin and, and, and all those guys, um, a lot of the pit builders out there, they say one inch above the grade level keeps an even flow um, and creates a great draw. So that's what I did. Um, I figured I would do the duels instead of doing one giant one because um, you don't want too much draw. Otherwise, everything whips through here so fast and you're basically um, not getting any smoke on your food. Um, and you want enough draw to where the smoke doesn't linger and, you know, 
make your food taste nasty. So it's kind of a fine line. I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna be better safe than sorry. I'm gonna throw two big beasts on there and I can always choke one off if I want to. So um, um, that's what I did on that. I um, uh, mounted, the reason I, I, I didn't extend the stack out and come up, um, I figured, you know, <laughs> science, right? Um, hot air rises. So, you know, if your stack is too long, like I was reading, if your stack is too long, if the smoke goes up and starts to cool down, it was at, it will actually start laying back down. Again, you won't get that draw. So I figured by welding them directly to the chamber itself, um, the radiant heat from the chamber should ke always keep those stacks hot, no matter what the temperature is outside, no matter what anything, if I happen to cut them too long, that kind of stuff, you know, my screw up, whatever. Um, I figured it would keep that air hot, um, a lot keeping the draw going. So I could be wrong, could be completely off base, but it made sense, you know what I mean? So that's what I did. Um, now the, let me bring you down a little bit, a little bit easier to manage the tripod. So here's, um, I did do pull outs, uh, top and bottom. Um, these are my tuning plates down here. I'll try to get you a better view here. Um, the tuning plates are quarter inch. Um, I started with a 10 inch, um, to nine inch. And then the finals are three inches. Um, now when I was doing my burn in, um, I had just set these in there, just kind of guesstimating. I was within five degrees on both sides of the chambers. So I'm probably just going to bring these ones in just a little bit more, um, compensate you know get a little bit gap back over here and I should have a good balance and it, which I was pretty actually pretty impressed with because it's a big chamber you know the thing's massive um I did U -chan or C channel for my grates um as opposed to the angle iron uh because then that way I mean I can literally stand on these things almost and it, they'll never sag on me you know so that that was a that was a big thing um the belly um although the chamber is uh, um, six gauge, I did do the belly of the unit quarter inch plate, um, because you know, there's, that's where your heat is. You know, I, I want that to radiate. I want it to hold things like that. So, um, so the belly is quarter. Um, this I did, uh, that's a water pan system. Now I still have to build my pan itself that drops in there. It's going to be about three and a half inches tall. Um, I believe that was 18 by four and a half which gives me about a gallon of water. Now the um, uh, flame plate that comes up from the firebox is about an inch above the firebox, um, the inlet of the firebox, I should say, and it is quarter inch plate. The um, framework for the basket itself is all 3 16 plate, and then the basket itself will be, uh, the pan itself, I should say, it will be 3 16 as well. So I should just have nice moisture as opposed to boiling water. You know, I, I know I had a couple of comments about that. That should rectify that. That's why I did that. Um, the, um, the belly, um, it's hard to see here. Let me get you on this side. I mean, move this in. And let me put you over here. So I want to show you the belly of this. Let me pull this grate out. And let me put some gloves on here because she's uh she's been getting some seasoning on her. So she's uh getting a little sticky inside. Now I'm under the plate. And you can see how far the belly is. Um, I went down a total of eight inches down from the tuning plates, which gives me another uh, eight inches here. So I'm a good 16 inches from my grate to the belly of the of the beast here. Um, now the reason I did that is because um, a lot of the a lot of the smokers I've had, um, again, um, using the bottom grates, they're always hotter, you know. And it's like so if I had to smoke you know, meat at, at, you know, any of the lower stuff smoking, I'd always have to use the upper grates. 
<clears throat> and it's like I, I, I didn't want, I couldn't use the entire grill, and it, it just annoyed the shit out of me, you know. And it's like because it's always hotter down there. So if I'm cooking something up top, and I have my meat at the bottom, and I have some sides up top, you know, sides typically you're always cooking at a higher temp. So you always would have to be reversing things, you know, and it, that just was pointless to me. So I wanted to make sure um, the radiant heat from the belly of the smoker was not going to affect my lower grates. I should have an even temperature throughout the whole thing. In theory, that's, I think, you know, I don't know, we'll see. Um, the, um, the shelf, uh, it's actually a stainless shelf. It's a restaurant, um, uh, a restaurant kitchen shelf that I found on Amazon for, was, I believe it was under 60 bucks, man, all stainless. And what I did was build a frame underneath it with pins. Uh, so it drops in and out, just pulls right out of there. So that was, um, cause I, when I, when I asked the fab shop about, um, bending me a piece of stainless steel, um, it would have been, uh, almost, um, 200 bucks, you know, it's like, well, for 50 and, uh, you know, probably about $20 in steel, I have a stainless shelf. So, um, so now over to the firebox. Uh, oh, also, uh, from the, uh, smoker place, the wholesale smoker place. Um, I got the billet hinges with the, um, um, Zerks. Those, um, I believe were $4 for the hinges already done. So, Again, that's a great place, man. It really is awesome. Um, firebox. This is where I wanted to spend some time. Let me uh, get the tripod a little bit better here. So, this bad boy here is quarter plate with two inches of insulation. Now, what I did is I built the outside the exterior box. And then I laid, uh, I framed it, excuse me, Cody. I framed it with three sixteenths um, by two inch uh, tubing on the inside. Then I laid an inch of ceramic fiberglass insulation, uh, high temp. And then another quarter inch plate with a one inch air gap. So I actually have um, one inches of air gap and one inches of ceramic insulation so code name back up back up uh the grate i did all three eights um i am going to make an ash pan for it and i'm going to make a fire basket for it uh just in case i'm you know just for the the coal burning type things i did use three eights plate and i uh, just spaced them out and built them around uh a uh, quarter inch um uh angle so that's that uh the inlet here is I wanted to make sure the flow was nice. So as you can see how the plates work, I have a lot of space in there. Um, and then I framed that all out. Um, again, that's three eighths plate up at the top uh, for the flame guard, uh, things like that. I put a flame guard here. So when the fire's burning, it doesn't, you know, rush out like that. Um, that's pretty much it. Gaskets are the um, uh, the Oki Joe gaskets. I've used them before, and I've 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 had nothing but luck with them. So that's what I that's what I used this time. Um, this was the um, uh, right here. Uh, my damper. I have to make a couple adjustments to it uh, because she wants to. She's a little bit tough to work with. So I'm gonna pull that back out and do a little more grinding on it, but. Um, I figured that would give me plenty of airflow. All I did was use uh, a quarter inch plate and cut them. I built a lower framework, an upper framework. So though with inch and a half, one inch at the back. So when I closed it, it would fill the holes. Um, two more uh, flat stock on the outside for the gap. That was, I was really it. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing, nothing, anything. So, and that's that. So. Um, that's pretty much it guys. Um, it took, uh, on my seasoning and my fire up one second. Sorry. I got, uh, tripods pain in the ass. So on the, um, uh, fire up, um, I was just kind of, you know, just 
burning everything out, and plus doing a seal test, make sure my welds hold. You know, like I said, I'm a noob, so I um, it took a minute to heat it up. Um, now, granted, it's 30, 35 degrees out, and that day it was pouring rain. It's cold as shit. I'm not used to this, but um, uh, it took a minute to heat up. But once it did, it was it was even and. Like I said, you know, even without messing with the tuning plates, I was within five degrees on each side of the chamber. So uh, a little bit of a few adjustments actually on here. Let's do that. Um, I should be pretty even. So the tuning plates are working. So, um, so I'm happy to see that. But other than that, that's about it. Um, super proud of how it turned out. Uh, I think it's going to be fun to cook on. Um, definitely can cook whatever I want, um, uh, as much of what I want, you know, um, oh, the reverse flow thing. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me, uh, why I didn't build a reverse flow. Reverse flows are great, but the, for me, um, the chances of me having a chamber full of the same meat that I need to cook at the same temp, it'll probably never happen. So I want to be able to make a 325 side over here or a 300 side if I'm cooking uh, um, chicken, you know, and I have beef over on this side, you know, something or ribs on this side. And I want to be able to have that, you know, and that's what the tuning plates will do for me. You know, um, down the road, in all honesty, I could add a stack on the other side of the unit and slide all the tuning plates together so they lock together. Um, and it would really choke these cats off over here and it would, could easily double as a reverse flow without any modifications at all except for adding a stack on that side of the chamber so um but like i said would it benefit me probably not you know yeah it just wouldn't so it wasn't worth wasn't worth it so i wanted to build something that uh was going to work for me that was the whole point of this so so that's it but i gotta say if you guys are on the fence um try it i mean I, I went a little overboard on my first project um believe me it uh it got to me <laughs> um you know a couple weeks in uh, a lot more work than i anticipated a lot more everything but it was a huge learning experience it was awesome you know so um but um it, it's it's a fun thing you know and um believe me there was a there was a level of pride um and a proud moment when i had my fire lit and I cracked my stacks and I could almost see the flames go towards the chamber. So I'm like, holy shit, that's some draw right there. So I was, just to see smoke coming out of those stacks, um, it was a proud moment, proud papa moment right there. So, but um, if you're on the fence, try it. I mean, even if you wanna start something small, I mean, really you can build what you want for a fraction of the cost. Um, that these guys want to charge you for them, which is understandable. There's a ton of labor involved, but if you don't mind putting that labor in, save that money, you know, and, uh, and build what you want, you know, can't imagine what, um, uh, something this size, um, built with this steel, um, would cost me out on an open market. You know, I guarantee you it's well, well, well above, um, the materials and things I put into it. So, that's it, boys and girls. That's all I got. That's the trend killer. Um, we are now back to regularly, regularly scheduled food poured programming. So I will be um, um, I'm excited to finally start cooking more and more again. I mean, I've been cooking. I've been using the cube, which I love. I love them. I love my barbecue. But um, it'll be nice just during the day. This is what I get to do. You know what I mean? When it's time for dinner, I get to fire this beast up. So. Um, all right, that's all I got. Um, if you have any questions, you know, you know me, hit me up. I'll do the best I can. So, all right, boys and girls, later.